Hey, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. This is Tuesday, November the 13th. This will be our chart lesson for today. Uh, interesting day. I saw it a couple of different ways here. I believe there were two channels, to be honest with you. We had a larger channel here, and then we had a uh, stronger, more minor channel that overshot the main channel, and then prices reversed, and we sold off. And um, I'll explain a couple of things that I was looking for over here. Really, until this point right here, actually, I would say right here, the trend was up, and this is where the trend reversed, and then it was down from here. You really could almost say it reversed from up here. Uh, but until we had a break of this trend line right here, uh, which I believe came starting on this move after we had this little two, leg, two legs up here in the middle, uh, I believe that that was when the downtrend really started, and you can see it accelerated after that. Um, prices kept trying to bounce all the way down through here and even here and here, uh, but they just couldn't do it. Uh, we just couldn't muster up any strength. They weren't through selling it off. And you can even see that, you know, you look for your measured leg. There's leg one. Uh, leg two two really overshot that and we really went much lower than that so um, it was it was really hard to determine what was going on coming down through here but looking back on it now and this happens sometimes when you get an overshoot of a trend channel um, many times you don't get a retest of the high that was the best we could do the market was just that weak and and if you really and if you didn't see this bigger channel and you were looking at this channel here uh, we did have a break we had a break down here and then a run to a new high uh, so then you you know you'd be looking for a sell-off but I was paying more attention to the bigger trend and really considered that to be more important than this one right here but I don't know if that was the case by the end of the day so anyway just something I wanted to point out there but let's go talk about the trades um, this is another reason why I'm always telling you just follow the price action because I was determined that we were going to retest this high, and it just never happened today. Now, we may go from here and retest it, um, but you see, um, I wanted to keep getting long all in here. And they all worked, but you couldn't get any runners or any long-term moves out of them. And we just continued to sell off. So, And then we did have this little channel here. We had a break and then moved down. And so I suspect we'll probably fill this gap and move on, but we'll see what happens. Let's talk about the trades. Uh, the first entry was right here, and really what you've got is you've got a low that was running right across here, so to speak, like so. And I should have already had this on there, but notice that you got your lows. You get the most touches right there, and all your, especially with your closes too. And you had this little one tick below that. Uh, those matching lows right there and prices reversed. You could go long right there. We did have a little bit of overlap, but you had this trap here. Uh, and then this is a kind of a reversal, and so we're heading back up. And generally, you want that to break that bar first uh, before this bar closes. It didn't do it, but um, it still gave you a chance. So you could have waited for it to tick higher and then maybe even try to drop a limit order in. But a lot of times, you'll miss these trades. So the way to enter this really was either entering down here. I actually entered this with a limit order down here, I'll be honest with you, but I don't like to talk about that because prices could have easily gone lower and you just, you know, you get out with a real quick stop. But I got in one tick off the low with a limit order and it was all uphill for most of the day after that. I mean, really, if you consider the trend started down here, that's right about one o'clock. So we spent the most, the majority of the day in this uptrend. Uh, and really, we I guess you could say the high of the day was around 10 o'clock, and we sold off from there. So depending on how you want to look at that, but I still consider the downtrend started right here uh, when we failed to go higher, any higher than that right here. So, uh, But this was a nice entry, and it's out of strong support, and you can see that. And we made a little double bottom, and, and these are the best kind. When you see a double bottom where the right side ticks a tick or two lower, and closes higher with a stem that's really a better trade than an even double bottom in my opinion because you get so many trap traders that go short right there 
So you get their momentum when they have to start exiting, and you can see it. Once it started higher, it started hitting the stops and accelerated, and then it got a little choppy, and uh, it got above, you know, it had a failed second entry short, and it went above that, and, it, and that generated a lot more stops right here along this high, and so it hits the stops again and runs up again. Um, there was an, there was actually a little two-bar matching low in an entry right here, but this is not a good entry. It's not a safe entry because it's, it's not much of a correction. You really want to be in down here. You could enter here, but it's dangerous, and you can see it didn't take but just a minute. It snapped back. Uh, and again, you had another similar entry to that one right here, and look what happened. It failed instantly. So you're better off to wait and try to catch the second entry if you got a nice reversal bar. And this is almost a perfect, <coughs> excuse me, repeat of this little setup down there. And you can see that, you know, you got a one tick lower and it reversed, close on its high almost, go long right there. Uh, again, Notice this, your entry would have been right there. Well, your runners were safe again. And so they're off running. And then you got another. So on either one of these trades, you got a nice set of runners and uh, real easy runners. And uh, quick scalp, you know, you're in and out real quick on your scalp. You got, and you move your stop to break even. You've got no more, uh, you know, you've got no more risk in the trade at that point. Uh, because if it comes back and takes your stop, all it gets is a break-even stop. Or uh, then you got a two-legged pullback here. This is another second entry. This is not a really green bar, but it's got those couple of ticks lower, reversed. It's two measured legs. You can see leg one, then a pullback, and then a second leg down. Uh, it didn't quite get to the trend line, but you may not have had this trend line. And the way I got it was I drew it off these highs right here. Uh, actually, I drew it off those first couple of swings, so I had it a little steeper to begin with, but I came back and rechecked it off those highs, and then you drop it down there, and you can see it fits right in there. So um, it didn't quite get back to that trend line right there, uh, but that's you know that's close enough to be good, especially when you're trying to pull it off this side, because you never know that this wasn't the trend line right there, and we just overshot it a little bit. And a lot of times that's the case when you start to see those stems. So, uh, but I really believe that was it right there. And you can see that. And when it broke above it a couple of times here, it turned down, turned down. Um, so this was good for a scalp. Uh, it's two legs back. It's a second entry long. Um, you know, it's a failed break below kind of a double bottom across here. So a lot of different reasons to enter right there. It's, you know, everything's been above the EMA. So that was a good trade, easy scout. You didn't get any runners there. And now it comes back and it actually hits the trend line and it breaks it right here. Um, and you got pretty much a similar setup to this. It's two legs back again to the trend line. And, the be and I'm always trying to tell you how the best trade set up off the trend line. Notice this one didn't get to the trend line. It was a good trade, but notice how it failed pretty quickly. Uh, this was a pretty good move too, but it wasn't off the trend line and notice it didn't, you know, you didn't get a move like this or even a move like this, but look what happens when it finally gets back to the trend line. Uh, it, it took it a little minute to get going, but look at it take off and that's where your best trades will always occur during the pullbacks to the strong support and resistance. And on a trend, you know, on a trend day, that's pullbacks to the trend line and that's where you're going to get your best entries. And coming down over here, look where the best entry, entry, you know, the biggest moves come right off of that trend line. Uh, until you touch that trend line, it's just kind of choppy, and then you finally double tuck, bump it there, and look at that sell-off. So just remember that. That's where your best moves are going to be. And there were actually two opportunities to enter this one here. So I kind of made that circle bigger. Let me back out just to make sure you can see this. But you could have entered here because this is a second entry long. Uh, but it kind of stalled here. And, you, you know, that might have shaken you out. A lot of times it's worth just exiting if that happens. But I kept my stop below the signal bar right here. And notice it ticked one tick lower and then turned up. And so you could either add on or enter right here for sure. And, again, it took it a little while to get going. 
but as long as you kept your stop below the signal bars, eventually it broke out of there. And guess what? Either one of these entries, your, um, your runners were safe. And so you could have ridden this all the way up here. Nice, easy entry. Uh, the first time you got a negative bar was right here. That's usually the best place. Um, there's two different ways I'll run my um, stop sometimes. A lot of times I'll just start moving it up below each bar. But the best way to do it, uh, when you're wrong, you'll give back more money, is to wait until you got two bars. So you've got a high bar, you got a bar here, and then now you've got a bar in your direction. Put your stop right below it. And notice it never got triggered there. And if you, here's the next one. You put it right below the second bar. It never got triggered. Then it goes up. And then now you got a second bar here. You put it below there. And that gets you out right near the top. Uh, so that's another way to do it. And I don't know if I've talked about that one much because you give back a lot more on that. Here's a good one. You know, you're going up and you got this bar. Then you got this bar and you put your stop right there. And uh, that would have saved you from it running all the way down to here. And actually, when it once it went higher and you didn't get, actually, you would have got stopped out on, actually, that's the first bar. So here's the second bar. You didn't get stopped out there. You wouldn't have got stopped out until, actually, here, I guess, thinking about that. Um, actually, as bearish as that is, I guess that is still the second bar. I would have probably moved it right there, and that would have got you out the better spot. Uh, the fact that those were matching highs had me kind of thinking differently there, but Normally, I would have put it right below that bar. But even if you did put it there, you gave back an extra tick or so um, without it coming all the way. But it didn't come all the way back and take out your break-even stop. So just something to think about. There's many different ways you can manage those runners. But that's two ways I like to do it. I like to wait either, you know, if I, on a real choppy day, I'll, a lot of times I'll move it up below each bar. Uh, but, the, but a lot of times the best way to do is wait for the second bar. There's your first kind of hesitation bar, and there's your second one. Put it right there, and you notice that. And then here you got another one, and there's your second bar. You put it right there, and it, it just keeps going higher until either there's your second bar or that one. But I think this one, uh, if you get an inside one, that's the same. You know, treat that like a second bar and put it right under that one, and um, I think you'll come out better like that. So... Um, and again, here, there's your first bar. There's your second one. You put it below there. And um, that gets you out way up here if you're long here. And actually, I'm going to show you. Actually, I probably should have marked this one green because I went long right here on this little trap. And, um, you know, it was good for just a scalp, a scalp only. I didn't get anything more. I didn't got just enough for a scalp. Uh, but I did think it was worth mentioning, um, so I might have marked that one in green. But notice you got your one leg back, and then this is your second leg, but it's got two legs in it. So I really like that long above that little doji right there. And again, it was only good for a scalp. And looking back on it now, I wouldn't have probably taken that trade, but I wanted to mention that one. And then I'm also going to talk about some other trades down here. I wanted to go long here on this big reversal bar. But we didn't tick below that bar before we turned above it, and there's just too much overlap right there. And you figure it's going to snap back up here, but there's not really a lot of room. And so as bad as I wanted to take that trade, I didn't because I wasn't sure if we weren't going to go do a retest there, and I didn't want to miss it, so I was real eager to get in. And this is a good example of what will happen to you when you're real eager to, eager to get in for the retest. Um so you got a second opportunity here. Now you got a double bottom. You got to bounce off the bigger trend channel line. And this is, uh, and again, I got this one the same way I got this one. I drew it off these first two swings and drug it down because, uh, you know, that's how I found that one. And you see it, it was holding all the way up. And then, of course, when we came right off it, we bounced. So you want to get in on that one. You got to, based on the reasons I told you earlier, because that's where the best moves come from and I was really looking for this thing to shoot off again but it didn't it failed and then we had two legs back and we bounced off of it again so I went long again and um, again I got another scout but it quickly came back and took out my runners and then finally we get a break of the main trend line but look at this break below the double bottom the big reversal bar so I got all excited again 
got in long again here and uh, when this one made two bars in a row um, and made this double top I exited with a tick or two I didn't quite get the full scalp out of that one and thank goodness I did and it turned and it turned down and you actually could have gone short here but it just really was you know it's really suspect because you've got all these matching lows you got a fail break lower and there's a good chance this thing ticks lower and turns back up it wasn't to be um, and I just you know going short there is really really dangerous but it's a great move down so if you saw that and you took it I'm glad you were brave enough to take it I wasn't I missed out on this but hey I'd already made all my money and there's no sense I'm not going to risk giving it all back on an iffy trade and uh, but I did want to show you these trades and 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 this is a I guess my point is is that I do this I've been I've, you know I've got thousands and thousands you know I don't know how many thousands of screen hours I've got but I got a lot of them and I can tell you that because I've sat here for multiple years and look at this thing all day long and uh, so I should know better than to be biased on my entry and I'm following the rules here because we just now got a trend line break but I wasn't taking into account that we had an overshoot up here too and a lot of times when you get an overshoot you won't get a complete retest you'll just get an attempt like this and then prices you know because you're, you're overdone up here and that's just about as good as a trend line break and a retest in a lot of cases and you can see by this right here that uh, you know thing is not real strong to the upside again especially when you took off and came back and took off and failed again so I should have been following the price action here and had I done that I would have been thinking uh, when this failed I would have thinking hey I gotta get short right here because we're probably going lower but instead I was I was just infatuated or or blinded by the idea that I thought we had to have a retest here so don't do that just follow the price action look what's happening you got a big move down you've got a two-legged correction and so now you got two legs back up to the other way what does that usually lead to a leg down in the other direction and boy did you get a leg in the other direction here even after this failure that's just a breakout pull back short and that's another reason you could have entered there but there really are a lot of overlapping bars there and you know even if you were thinking short you may not have taken this one because I wouldn't I, I didn't take it because I just didn't trust it coming out of all that overlap we know what happens but let me show you this too if you move this up we got a double top and you got a trap right there uh, so that really makes it worthwhile to try to get in here because you got this bearish move down and you don't have much of a correction and you actually could have probably drawn trend line down through there and you would have had that too with a double kiss off of it and had I drawn that trend line I, and moved you know and draw my line right here I probably would have been more apt to take that trade but I was just blinded by this support here and the first break of this bigger trend channel and I was looking for it to go higher so don't get married to one side or the other follow the price action I tell a lot of you that every day and then today I didn't do it myself but not a big deal it didn't cost me any money I didn't lose any money I just didn't make any money um, and I made all my money over here anyway so it was a really a pretty good trading day and this is another reason why I like to be out in the afternoon because a lot of times you'll get things like that happening and the real kick kicker is, is if you if you make a mistake over in here you got time to recover from it but if you make a mistake this late in the afternoon if you get if you got long here and didn't re exit you're on the wrong side and look there's no chance to get out of that there's no comeback if you're hanging on you're just hoping and praying it's gonna come back and it never does and you get burnt and you lose money and you probably lose a lot of money and uh, so don't get married to uh, any one way follow the price action follow the rules most of the time following the rules is gonna keep you on the right side um, but if not just follow the price action if you're making lower highs and lower lows what is that that's a downtrend and generally when you got a move like this down and you get two legs in the middle you're probably gonna get another move down because that's your two-legged correction and now you gotta be looking for a second leg in the other in the other direction and so just remind yourself of stuff like that and I believe it'll help you um, but I'm gonna wrap it up and of course there were some shorts up here but man these are just 
you know, you don't, I don't take these very much because I'm looking for the big move down here. Didn't get it today, but most of the time you will. And if you're trying to get short up in here, even though these are good trades, you know, this is a big enough channel where you probably could take some shorts, but until you're, you know, you know that this trend is over, it's dangerous. And this is just one of the days that it would have worked out for you. Most of the time, uh, you'd get trapped like over in here. You're trying to go short. You might have got a scalp out of it, but you probably get trapped on the wrong side and lose money. So don't do it. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with, hey, one other thing I wanted to mention before I uh, call it a day is I'm really uh, we've had a lot of new people uh, watching the videos lately and joining and sending me emails. And so I'm getting more emails than ever. So it's it's getting to where I can't answer them as quickly. So if I don't answer you as quick as I have in the past, don't think I'm ignoring you. I don't think that I don't want to answer your question. I will always answer. It just may take me longer. But it, it really has. The traffic has picked up a lot lately. So just be aware that I may not answer as quick as I always have in the past because I'm just busy and it's getting to where, uh, you know, trying to answer emails. You know, I, I used to, I actually like to answer emails while I'm trading. If if I'm waiting on prices to come back to here before I enter or they're up here and I'm waiting them to come back to this trend line here, then I might pop over here and read a few emails while I'm waiting on prices to come back to my entry point or where I'm wanting to enter. And uh, I'm always telling you to pick your entry points in advance and be waiting on prices to come to you instead of you chasing prices. So um, that's when I'll read some emails. And uh, generally, I, I'll have two or three in there, and I can answer them and think about them objectively. But when you got a dozen in there, you know, it gets harder and it gets confusing. And I'm starting to see where that may not be the right thing to do if I've got a bunch of emails to try to answer them while I'm trading. So I uh, just want to make you aware of that, that I am starting to get a lot more emails not complaining. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing this, so I'm going to keep doing it. But I just want to tell you that, uh, just so you know, if I don't answer your email as swiftly as I have in the past, there might be a reason for that. So it's because I've got a lot of emails. So I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you tomorrow.